One. Welcome to Content Inspire. I'm your host, Andrew Calvino. And today I have the legend and badass himself, Darren Decker, um, VP of sales for Caged. And his story, I have a feeling, is going to be incredible. When you guys hear it, you're going to go after it. So introduce yourself to the listeners, my man. Hello, uh, I'm Darren Decker, uh, currently VP of sales uh, with Caged and um, big, uh, big sports nutrition nerd, um, passionate about this industry um, and excited to kind of get into some questions um, today and, and really kind of explain my, my story, how I'm here in Boise, Idaho, of all places I could potentially be in the world um, and kind of give a little background in case uh, people want to know anything about these um, in the background. These are my favorite uh, movies. Nice. Uh, bodybuilders were the main uh, characters in. So can't see this one, but that's all time favorite over the top. Over you the know, top. OK. That's just on. Great, great, great overall story about a father and a son and their relationship and how they bond over the sport of arm wrestling. Um, so this is, okay. that's, all right. That's all right. Only, only the OGs are going to know about that one. Yeah. Um, kindergarten cop classic Ar Arnie and then pain and gain, you know, based in Miami, right? Yeah. Based, in Miami, yeah. Pain and gain, uh, based on a true story too, which is kind of fucked up, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Darren, um, first question your way is what is your why? All right. Um, so it's, there's, there's, there's two, there's two, this is twofold for me. Okay. So one is, one is my why on like a personal young Darren, right? Yeah. And the other is my why of like who I am today. And both of those whys kind of have very similar pathways, but maybe a different line of thought process. Um, my why on why I work in this industry, why I work for a company like Caged um, versus maybe others um, is, you know, based off of what's my, what's my IG handle? Uh, Husky boy co Husky boy. Right. Yeah. So I was a, I was a Husky boy growing okay. up still, still see myself as this like overweight kid. Right. And uh, okay. not, not necessarily having the knowledge, um, you know, the understanding of nutrition, supplementation, exercise that, you know, can really change someone's perspective life from a mental, emotional, and physical standpoint. And so I love this industry because I see an opportunity to help young Darrens, right? That are confused and sad um, and depressed on how they look and they don't know where to go or have the answers and don't know who to trust, right? Um, yeah. Can can that little can that little boy trust the liver king? I don't know anymore, you know. Um, but can he trust a, a brand like Caged or you know, the guys at Ghosts, I, I think that there are really good people making really great products that have great content that can actually inform um, the masses. And so that's that's part of my why is it's it's appealing uh, to me to help a younger version of myself. Um, my my other why, of course, is, is my family. Um, I have a beautiful five year old daughter um, that I want her to live in, in an awesome world full of, of health and fitness and my my partner in crime, my wife, who I've been married to for four years now, um, who's amazing. We're, we counterbalance each other. She's a meditation guide. Um, nice. so I, yeah. I clang and I clang and bang and she does yoga and I eat all the red meat. And for the most part, she's been vegetarian. She's, she's starting to enter some meat back into her diet, but like having that full encompassing spectrum of mind, body, and spirit, I think is is something I'm, I'm really, really proud of. And I want to make sure that my, my daughter has a full grasp and understanding of that too. So those are kind of my, my main two whys. So, so thank you for sharing yeah. your whys with me and the content inspired community. So in regards to young Darren, Husky boat, a uh, Husky boy, boy, um, honestly, that's really cool that you shared that experience that you were a little bit on the heavier side. And then you being with caged, you just want to have an opportunity to help people with body yeah. image issues, nutrition, you name it. And sure. you even gave a shout out to Ghost because I do know that there's great companies 
with good quality products, with great content that's getting out there to people and making a difference. So yeah. you guys at Cage are doing it right. Ghost, you name it, a lot of other brands. So um, do you see that there's been a shift in the industry as of late in regards to like informed consumers with brands that are doing things the right way? I mean, I would say there's probably less of a shift in the industry. I think the brands that have always provided and leaned on their community have always provided really like top level content for that community. Mm -hmm. I think that there's, there's probably a, there's probably a little bit of an undertone change in the consumer education piece of it, where the last two years people have been like, what in the fuck? Right. And having to question everything under the sun about health, pharmaceuticals, like, Mm -hmm. you know, masks like everything so everything's been like thrown up to where now there's a little bit of skepticism in almost everything you do right and in some way or form so i think that we're we're kind of seeing the benefits but at the same time um where i where i gauge that is interest in like in 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 markets right yeah so i can i can say that there's a interest in markets like grocery or drug channels, right? Those channels have been the same for like 15 years with the same old products that are all prop blends that, you know, are not effective for, you know, the end consumer. And there is now an appetite within those channels um, for better quality, more transparent products, right? And so that to me is also a way to, reach more consumers that are uneducated but yeah i would say you know with hell dude social media like there's there's been multiple instances probably within the last year that i've seen where something on tiktok takes off right we had not we have nothing to do with it like caged right but like someone's talking about gut health and glutamine and then all of a sudden in store i'm six xing my weekly numbers on glutamine right like so there's these, there's this also underlying power of influence that's out there, whether it's good, bad, or ugly, um, that we're also seeing kind of affect the typical uh, sales cycle uh, within some of these older brick and mortar uh, establishments too. So there's just a lot going on, man. It's a lot to navigate, to be honest with you. That's interesting that you said that. So um, another quick question your way is you started as a senior brand category manager and worked your way up to associate director of partnership for bodybuilding.com. Yeah. What professional and personal experiences did you have that helped you become who you are today? Oh man. Um, I've, I've dabbled a lot. Um, and I, I, I joke about this and I actually joked with our CEO of bodybuilding.com quite a bit when I was there where, I kind of coined, I'm a jack of all trades and a master of none, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I And I, I kind of viewed my education this way too. I went to a liberal arts college. Um, and so you learn a little bit about all these different subjects, you know, as like your yeah. base curriculum. And so you pick up all this stuff, but you're never really like a true master, just like one specialized segment. And I actually don't think I could ever be, right? I'm too interested in in marketing. I'm too interested in like programmatic advertising. I'm too interested in supply chain and finance and all these other things that make an entirety of a business work and function. Um, but I would say probably the the biggest um, opportunity I had to really see um, trial, error, good management, bad management um, was, was really my experience at Groupon in Chicago. Interesting. So, yeah, so in, in Groupon in Chicago, um, I was one of the first five sales reps on this new division called Groupon Goods. And I transferred over to Groupon Goods because I'm like, they're going to start selling hard products. They have a four, 40 million um, subscriber list that they can blast these hot deals to. They're going to freaking crush it. And so I jumped over there and I I went from five employees year one in that division to 300 within two years. So I got to, I got to witness scale and I got to witness just chaos, (laughs) (laughs) Um, trial air contracts that were wrong that you had to go back and get all vendors to sign the new contracts because there's so much liability in what we had already previously done and 
um, and new new executives. So like we were all young, pretty much like single, no kids, like group of ragtag partiers that also worked really hard. Mm -hmm. um, and then you got a whole bunch of Amazon and eBay executives that came in and then restructured and made us into category owners. Right. Um, and having and having going through that type of process was was really it was really humbling for me um, because I was like, um, you know, I was one of the first ones on the team, a little bit entitled. Like I should I I have like the top three sales out of everyone that's here. But then in the reorg, I was made an associate buyer. And I thought I was just like, hell no, hell no. Right. Yeah. But in retrospect, looking back at it, like that was just a very young, immature way to kind of look at things. Um, but yeah, I learned, I learned so much there and I got, um, I, I was able to, within that role too. So they placed me as an associate manager within toys, kids and games. Right. And so I got, it was actually one of the best jobs I ever had. Um, because I got to play with samples of toys all day. That's how I, I met my wife at Groupon. She was the jewelry buyer. Um, that's sick. Dude. I used to fly, I used to fly electric helicopters over people's heads in the office, shoot nerf guns at people. Like that was, that was me. That was my, my job. I got to go to the New York toy fair, which is one of the best trade shows I've ever been to in my entire life. Um, I got to fly out to Irvine and sit down at the headquarters with Mattel and Hasbro as a 24 year old man and pitch them and close them on close out deals and uh, negotiate product and costs like for Groupon. And so I, I really got to put myself in, in these, I would say stressful, but it was like, is a very, I was very naive. And when I look back, I'm like, holy shit. Like I, I went and did those things as like a 24 year old. No wonder I had no problem talking to anyone, um, you know, on the streets uh, nowadays. So I would say those were, those were trials and tribulations. Um, that really helped kind of mold me who I am. And I actually, I started sports nutrition at Groupon as a category. Really? Yeah. So I was, I'm, I'm talking a lot. So tell me like Darren, shut the fuck up whenever you want. Oh, uh, you know what? The one the best <laughs> advice that I've ever been given on this podcast, it's like 50, 50, right? It's when people yeah. are like, yo, you let the guests talk. You don't <laughs> talk over them. You don't like tell them, yo, shut the fuck up. Next question. Yeah. Like you let them talk. And me personally, that's because I'm interested in your story, right? Because sure. if you share your story and one person on this podcast listens to that and it's like that, it helps them find that switch. To fucking for sure. go after it yep. that means the world to me so well it, it all it all loops in right because my my intro to sports nutrition was groupon right okay. i i was a collegiate athlete i always went to gnc i always talked to to their employees i was always interested in supplements i took my diamondized protein i, I followed bodybuilding.com you know good old dr jim stepani you know and all his information too back in the day um and and so I was always interested in, in, in this world. Mm -hmm. And I was, I always questioned why Andrew Mason, the CEO of Groupon had what he called his DNR lists. Do not run, do not run these types of offers, weight loss pills, sports, nutrition, pre-workout, all these, all these things that we, we know, right. Um, that we all also know, like sell really well online. Um, and yeah. so I actually, I had to go to my division manager at the time and I was like, I really think we should be in this category. Um, all right, sorry, my computer just shut off. Um, I really need to be in this, we need to be in this category. And so I had to build a deck of the opportunity I saw within the space for us to open up a sports nutrition division. Okay. And so you're know, like, all right, well, we wanted to get into some consumables too. So I was overseeing like food, alcohol, and supplements, like all the things, <laughs> all the things that okay. was like do DNR, right? And alcohol was super tricky, but you could do some, you could ship some wine back then. So I had some wine, wine deals and partners that I worked with, but I started working with Glambia uh, right away, right? Mm -hmm. I started working with Nutribolt right away. So I started working with, um, you know, Bullnox and Joaquin, uh, down, uh, down in South Florida and okay. all okay. these, all these, all these different guys. Um, 
And I still keep up with these people. I have a muscle tech. Like I worked with Dean there and we were this brand new channel and I launched with some of the, the best sports nutrition brand. I mean, that's where I talked with Jeremy DeLuca back in the day because he was overseeing muscle farm. Right. And I would take like this and everyone had excess, excess, right? If you have excess units that you don't know where to move, you come see Darren and he's going to move them on Groupon. Right. And like I did a, I did a BSN, you know, explode deal uh, with Mark Doggett uh, of all people. And um, we sold like 12,000 units of that in literally like 24 hours. And so it was, it was like, it was that type of volume and we went from zero to 60 million run rate within three months. And like, it was, and that was in 2014. So BBCom was like still doing well for all these guys, but now they had this brand new channel that just freaking exploded. And so I got a lot of attention. That's really where I started meeting a lot of people in the industry too, and, and starting to grow my network. Um, and, and yeah, and so that's, that's kind of how I got really started in sports nutrition. And then I jumped and moved to Florida because that's what you do when you want to create your own supplements. And so, yeah. um, so I created, I created my own, um, private label line of okay. products and I sold them back to Groupon. So I became basically, cause I knew all the costs. Mm -hmm. And hopefully I don't get sued for all this, but then I, I basically, <laughs> I went to Florida, I knew which products sold the best and I gave Groupon better margins than they had. Um, okay. But I acted as a private label type of person for them. And so then they would come to me and they would say, Hey, we also want to get into this sporting goods category. We also want to get into these sexual wellness products too, but we don't really know who to go to, who's a good actor or not can you source these for us? And so I said, sure. And my wife and I flew to China and sourced directly from factories, created a couple of brands and resold all this stuff directly to Groupon. We set up a complete drop ship like method. So they didn't have to touch any of the inventory. And so we got preferential treatment on email lists and on site placement. And I mean, we, our first year of business, I think we did like $13 million with, with Groupon in South Florida. And it was, it was, it was a fun, fun time, but uh, just so everyone knows when you're young and you get a lot of money, don't fucking spend it all. <laughs> uh, well, Darren, um, you're dropping some, you're dropping some bombs, some huge <laughs> knowledge to the community right yeah, now. So, don't spend it. And yeah, one, if you're young and you have access to a stupid amount of money, like good money, don't spend it all. Um, two, if you are in a business and uh, look at all these different types of channels that you're able to monetize and see yeah. what you're able to sell, 12,000 units, you name it. And if you're able to move product, use that channel, like 10 exit. For sure. For yeah, sure. Dude, that was yeah. like gold. Everything, everything that you were saying, like the business major in me was like yelling, screaming. Yeah. Oh, yeah dude. <laughs> Um, so yeah. how did you get involved or how did you get with caged? Uh, yeah, so it's, it, it started with, uh, me being with bodybuilding.com. So, okay. um, you know, I, like I said, I, I left Groupon in 2014. I did my own business for, uh, it was like a, almost two years. We ran a Decker marketing group where, I pretty much had an investor that was buying the cogs. I would take a piece of that, that sale of the management of everything. Um, and then Groupon started deteriorating um, as well. And that writing was on the wall. And so I basically packed up and it's like, all right, what's, what's next for me? Um, right. And I, I'm into science. I'm a little, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, a, I'm a little bro -y, but also a little nerdy at the same time, if that, if that makes sense. So yeah. I really, I, especially if like you're into like you know formulations and ingredients the way that I am like you you kind of want to you want to take a next step so I'm like all right I've been in supplements and there's synergies that I can see within pharmacologic use I might go I'm gonna go see if I can get a job in pharmaceuticals mm -hmm. right so then I went and got a job in the pharmaceuticals and I was a pharmaceutical uh rep for Allergan um which but by the way is crazy i got hired by a by forest labs 
And by the time I started, they were acquired by activists and then acquired by Allergan before I even like was on the road to sell drugs. Like they had two acquisitions occur almost back to back. So the company that originally hired me, I didn't start driving for a, basically the third organization until I got in like the car and was like talking with doctors. It's pretty, pretty interesting um, to say the least, but the, uh, the amount of education um, that you get when you enter into uh, pharmaceuticals is, was really cool to me. Um, the science, the amount of effort and care that they put into at least up, up front, right. in that education was, was really interesting. And I got to, again, grind my teeth at talking to some smart people and feeling comfortable within my own knowledge set, right. You're talking to cardiologists, gastroenterologists, um, neurologists, by all means, um, you're talking to very, very bright people um, about your, you know, patented form of basically like choline or whatever. Um, so, you know, there's a, there's that piece that was intriguing to me. The job itself, I did not like because um, you basically are a glorified caterer at the end of the day, um, just buying lunches to try and get time with people to educate them on your, on your drugs at this point in the game it used to be a lot more fun when the regulations were dropped. Right. Um, but now it's a little bit stricter. And then from there, I went into medical device, um, was in hospitals, bedside, de designing uh, Foley catheters, which I had no experience in, but I walked out of that job after two years and had two patents to my name um, for different ways to, uh, to help within urology, uh, which, is, which is wild. Um, and we were in Chicago, we had just had our first child and first and only we're one and done. I want to retire early. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, and then and basically I was, I told my wife, like, I'm not passionate about this. Like what I'm doing is like, I enjoy like the sales and like the product creation process. And the fact that I still get to travel internationally to China and see factories and negotiate all that's great. But like being bedside within a hospital setting for Foley catheterization is not my cup of tea. It doesn't fill me up like mm -hmm. from a passion standpoint at all. And I'm still working out, still taking supplements, still, still involved and invested in health and fitness um, consistently. Um, still my pulse on that market. And I told her, oh, I'm going to reach out to bodybuilding.com. I had applied to bodybuilding.com probably four times in the past. Never a callback, never anything, like no, nothing, right? And so at that moment, I was like, I'm going to do it again. And and I I got a callback and they're like, hey, do you want to, do you want to interview? I'm like, yeah, I want to interview. And then basically I took a giant pay cut <laughs> to go work for bodybuilding.com to come in as a category lead and, um, and move my family to Boise, Idaho, of all places in the world. But we visited one weekend, and Boise was like the cleanest, like coolest little city that we had been to. And the thing that tip put us over the top was the way kids played with our daughter at the park. And if, if you don't have children, you may not understand in Chicago, like where we lived at least in Lincoln Park, it was us as parents. And then our child, and then usually it would be everyone else's child and all the nannies outside around the park, not giving a shit what the kids that they were watching were like doing, saying how they were playing with other kids. And we went here and it was all families, super involved, like the sweetest kids in the world, the most polite. And we we're like, holy shit, let's give this place two years. Let's give it a shot. And, okay. and so then... So then we were here and, um, and that's, you know, I, negotiating with caged on, uh, honestly, like a, a weekly basis, um, with their, with Mike Beaker, who was their VP of, at the time with Michael McLean, who's their president and CEO, Chris is here locally. So I got to know him as well. Um, and so, you know, just that relationship evolved and, you know, I reached, I was working with BBCom for almost, almost three years. I was there. And I was just kind of burnt out. I mean, I, I, I went through, I think, three layoffs while I was there and escaped probably multiple by the skin of my teeth. And so I was just like, it's time time to go looking for something else. Do I want to go to another brand? Yeah. Um, and so I, I started reaching out to uh, 
brands that I would want to work for. And Cage was Cage was one of them. Um, and Michael McLean gave gave me a fair shake. And he was like, you, you've never been a VP before. And I'm like, nope. And you've never really sold the GNC or vitamin shop uh, before. I said, nope. And so he's like, but I think you're smart. And I think you care about the customer. And I think you know our products very well. And we'll give you a shot. And that was that was it. And so I've been with Cage for it'll be two years in February. And um, I'm loving honestly every every second of it. And I'm still learning a lot. And you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say like a, a tenured VP of sales that knows every in and out of every single channel and every single market. Uh, but we have great leaders um, and good mentors for me right now too. That uh, I'm I'm super excited for the future of Caged. And of course, my career at the same time. So nice. Um, yeah. so I actually remember the either it was an announcement or Ben Kane from Price Plow was like, "Yo, my boy, VP of Sales, join Cage." Like, and I yeah. was like, "Man, that was sick um, to see that from from Price Plow and Ben." Um, yeah, Ben. Ben and I uh, cultivated a relationship through through BBCom um, because he, I mean, he was a content guy. We utilized Ben for. Um, you know, there's not, there's not too many, I would say, quote unquote, authorities within sports nutrition, mm -hmm. right? But I think Ben's, Ben's like vast knowledge of not only the space from a brand side, but formulations, ingredients. Um, we used him for uh, the bodybuilding.com awards uh, to kind of do like a panel, a panelist selection of products to outside of just like the consumer that's going to vote for like, you know, the product that they take, like, let's actually take someone's like true opinion of formulas product, like what this brand's done and get, get their inputs too. So, and yeah, and we've, 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 we keep in contact and they're, they're of course, uh, we're a client of theirs uh, for caged as well. And yeah. And I, I love, I love outfits like, you know, FI and, and Ben. Um, I feel, I feel like we need more of them, honestly. Um, don't, Ben's not gonna like me saying that out loud because he wants to rule them all. Um, but <laughs> I think uh, I think it's I think it's it's good to educate more people because there's still a lot of crappy products being purchased on the market that you know uh, don't don't give the value that people think that they're actually getting from it. So that's true. So how important do you think um, outlets such as FI, Price Plow, Stack, Stack 3D? Um, is to brands like how important is that to have a good relationship with those companies or utilize their services to maybe get brand new customers and onto your brand yeah i mean i think it's i think it's important um and i think it's you have you have to look at it through the brand lens too i've never looked at fi or price plow as a conversion you know generating new customer generating um you know, platform. I look at them as, as a place to get knowledge about our products and outside of us. Right. And you, there are, there are a third party that are going to give their input on us without us saying it's about us. Right. And so I think that there's, there's intrinsic value in that. And yeah, I, I think, uh, I think they're about, I think they're, there's tremendous amount of value there. And then you also have to look at who follows them. I know for a fact there's some there's some pretty large retail buyers that follow the content that those guys put out, and that is good for the people that are investing in those channels to to drive their message. So, sweet. And then um, another quick question your way is: What would you say to someone who's afraid to go after what they want? What advice would you give? What would you say? Man, fear. Fear's a hell of a hell of a beast in the, and I would also tell them to calm that voice, right? Mm -hmm. That voice that's in your head is usually trying to lie to you, right? Yeah. That, voice that tells you you're going to fail is usually trying to protect you or lie to you. But um, I would say that's, that's probably one of the biggest learnings I've had over the last few years is to tell that voice to shut the fuck up and just do it. Right. Like, um, and yeah, I, I don't know. My wife and I have this conversation a lot about the, the stories that we tell ourselves in our head, that one voice. And I think you probably know what I'm talking about, that voice that's always kind of there creating these, these stories that don't exist, right? Um, and I would just 
have someone kind of sit with that voice and slowly try and tell it to be quiet and then just keep moving forward. Um, and that's, that's kind of how I look at it, at least if that makes sense. Thank you for sharing that with me and the listeners, dude. Of course. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you so much for being on Content Inspire, for sharing your story, who you are. Is there anything that you would like to say to the listeners before we hop off? Um, just be kind to each other, right? Um, we're, we're really into uh, the golden rule right now in our house. And mm -hmm. that golden rule, I think, transcends um, how we interact with each other. Um, not only in a professional setting, um, but also like an everyday setting, mm -hmm. treat other people the way that you want to be treated. And, you know, I know we can get a little catty in this business and, um, you know, yeah. social media exacerbates a lot of that. And I just think that everyone's just trying their best and we all want the same things in life is to be loved, feel fulfilled um, and be taken care of. Right. And, um, so that's, that's kind of my message is just follow that golden rule whenever you can. And, um, that's, that's about it, man. Awesome. Thank you. I'm going to link everything of yours down below in the bio so that people can check it out. Oh, um, man. and content inspire community, anybody that checks out this video on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, anywhere that you listen to this podcast, thank you for your support and until next time. Awesome. Thanks for having me, brother.